Hello folks and welcome to another episode of the Dr. Mark Foster Show. This is Mark. It is a very um, unnerving time in the United States right now. I had been watching the ongoing coverage of um, the uprisings taking place throughout the United States, uh, including some revolutionaries who have been involved in, in these activities. Um, I must admit that uh, given the lack of class consciousness which exists in the United States and really throughout the world, uh, I am not terribly optimistic that they will be successful, but despite that, I give them praise and I hope that they will accomplish something in the struggle against the capitalist world system, the intersectional capitalist world system. In other words, a system in which racism and sexism and ageism and ableism or disableism in Britain and ethnicism and classism and above all capitalism the umbrella for all of the other types of oppression which exist in the United States that this capitalist world system which denies freedoms to the vast majority of people while protecting the freedoms of the bourgeoisie the capitalist class uh, in a country in which um, right-wing libertarianism which actually began here in the United States has become the dominant type of libertarianism to the point where when I say that I'm a libertarian communist most people find that entertaining not realizing that libertarian communism existed for a long time uh, before so-called right-wing libertarianism exemplified by Ron Paul and his ilk was initiated. The What I have observed and this is just my a sense that occurred to me in the last several minutes is that part of the reason why these uprisings are taking place right now as opposed say to last year or even a few months ago uh, is because of COVID-19 there is a very close connection I believe between COVID-19 and the current uprisings now people of color have for a long time since before the United States was the United States been oppressed by the American police state that American police state continues to oppress its citizens right now including journalists people who are simply covering the story last night for the second time that I know of a journalist was intentionally attacked by a police officer um, it's it's a very distressing time everyone is under stress and again I think a lot of it is because of the COVID-19 pandemic so to me these revolutionary activities um, which are taking place and I'm not talking about the peaceful protesters here but I'm talking about the actual revolutionary activities which are occurring in streets around the United States and cities all across the United States east to west north, north to south not only in Minneapolis and St. Paul but in New York, in Atlanta, in San Francisco, in Berkeley, and in Los Angeles. 
all over the United States these demonstrations are taking place. So to me what's happening is what Emanuel Wallerstein, the founder of World Systems Analysis, has been predicting for a long time, namely that the collapse of the capitalist world system is just around the corner. He has speculated when asked when he thought it would be. Obviously he can't know. At one point he said, well, maybe 20 years, 30 years. I don't think so. I think it is happening right now. In other words, I think that COVID-19 has accelerated the decline and the destruction of the capitalist world system because the world has not been able to successfully deal with it, especially here in the United States, but not only in the United States, in Brazil as well, in Russia as well, um, in places like the United States and Brazil. The heads of state have been denying since COVID-19 first arrived in their countries that it was a serious problem. President Donald Trump keeps on saying even till the present day that a cure is just around the corner or a vaccine is just around the corner despite the fact that there is no evidence of that. It could happen that a vaccine may um, be available sometime uh, in the next 12 months or so, but no one knows for sure. It may be sooner than that. Again, no one knows for sure. So my concern is that these uprisings, well, there, there are several aspects to it. One is that the uprisings the congregating of so many people in one place is, I think, almost inevitably going to lead to a further escalation in cases of COVID-19. People in close proximity to one another, in many cases not wearing masks. Some people are, some people are not. But even those who are um, masks do not protect the person wearing the mask from being infected. They are meant to protect the person wearing the mask from infecting others. So if I go out and I wear a mask, which I always do, but I run into somebody who is not, then I am not protected from that person. For that reason, I wear a face shield as well. Uh, what I have said sometimes is that I will stop wearing my face shield when I see everyone or almost everyone around me wearing a mask. As of now, that is not the case in the Kansas City metropolitan area, at least not here in Johnson County, Kansas. So these horrible, distressing uprisings, possibly a revolution, a nascent, revol a nascent revolution, possibly. Though again, as I said, I'm not very optimistic, but possibly, possibly, um, are occurring right now, and it's different than several years ago, like in Ferguson, Missouri. Those demonstrations went on for weeks upon weeks upon weeks, and there were similar demonstrations around the country, but there was not the same kind of intersection between the killing of unarmed black women and men with a pandemic where people have been locked up in effect in their homes for a few months where many people have not 
made any money. Some people are on the verge of starving or losing their homes, wondering where their next paycheck is going to come from, especially now that the Republicans in Congress have said that they, there will be no more payouts to the American people in spite of the fact that many people, especially black and brown people, are suffering tremendously. Black and brown people are suffering much more than white people under the pandemic. Interestingly, however, when I look at these uprisings taking place, a hopeful sign is that these demonstrations do not only consist of black and brown people. There are many white people. There are many Asian people. And I assume others. It's hard to tell by watching this thing on television. But it is a multi-ethnic, multicultural crowd of people who are all gathering. And I think, again, a lot of that is because of COVID-19. COVID-19 lit the spark. The killing by those police officers in Minneapolis took that flame and turned it into a blaze. And now the whole country is on fire. So um, I do believe that we will get through this in some way. Maybe not me, maybe not you, maybe not the Western world, including my own country, the United States. In fact, I don't think that the United States and the Western world will be around that much longer. But I'm only surmising, of course. I'm not a prophet. But there will be some people who I hope will survive, a remnant of sorts. And I think they will become the ultimate revolutionaries. There are some revolutionaries working now. The question is, are there enough of them? And I just don't think that there are. So I think that the only thing that can happen is for this intersectional capitalist world system, this capitalist world system with intersections of oppression based on race and class and gender and nationality and ethnicity and disability and sexual identity and so on, that all of these intersections need to be wiped out. And I think that will require the complete demolition of the capitalist world system. This has been Mark Foster reporting for the Dr. Mark Foster Show. Have a good one.